Moreover, I want to go high. I want to go really high. Light, fire, flame. If I take a flame and I kindle another candle. So if you, the Ben Noach, you, the pious among the nations, you take your candle and you you ignite the wick from my wick, from my candle, while you now have that fire, it doesn't diminish from my flame. See, if I have a bucket of water and I pour water into your cup, I have less water. But I could ignite an infinite number of candles from my one flame. It doesn't diminish. It doesn't follow the the laws that uh, pertain to almost everything else that's material in the world. Everything else, if I, I give you something, I have less of it. The power of Hashem's word, wow, this is very high. Excuse me. The power of God's word, the reason why the fire, the light is that by passing it on to you, the world, it doesn't diminish from the flame of Torah. And this very much addresses your part, the second part of your, your question. Someone has to light that flame to give over to the world. How? It just penetrates. The flame goes everywhere to the point that the non-Jew will come and say, my candle it needs to be lit. Uh, you are the priests of the Lord. Your job is to be a a mamleches kahan of a goy kadosh. Your role is to be a, a kingdom priest and a holy nation. That's in the inkipit of 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 the Ten Commandments, meaning Exodus chapter 19. So that's the point. The point is there's something powerful, and it, the Jewish people do, are not guided by natural laws. We are about to celebrate Hanukkah very soon, right? The whole point of Hanukkah, and the reason why it's such an important festival to our people and in Israel, it's it's enormous, is because we're a people that are lemaila minateva, which means above nature. There are seven days of creation, but then there's the eighth, Hanukkah eight. It's above, outside of creation. This, this whole place is one miracle. The story of the Jewish people is a story about a miracle. The flame wasn't supposed to last, and here we go with the flame, and here we go with Hanukkah. That flame was never supposed to make it, just like the Jew. We're not supposed to be here. We should have been extinguished long ago. Our oil should have been used up a long time ago. We should have ran out of fuel a long time ago. Other nations, they're gone. Our enemies, the Romans, the, these nations are gone today. The Prezi, Yuvusi, Gugoshim, Polish, they're gone. Now, they have descendants, but their national identity has been eviscerated. They don't have a covenant with God. The story of Hanukkah is very much not the story of a military victory. It's true, and it was a miracle, but it wasn't a miracle outside of nature. And that's why the Book of Maccabees is not very important to us. It's very important historically. Historically, the Book of Maccabees has enormous value to us as a history book, as Gibbons does, as Barbara Tuckman does. It's it's important history, but it's not the emphasis of Hanukkah, because after all, the, the Maccabean period didn't even last a century. It was a success, a glorious moment, but the, the ascension of the Maccabean period was didn't last forever, but the light did. And when does Hanukkah come up? Listen to me, Kindleuch. Listen to me, children of the Most High. When is Hanukkah? When is this festival that's soon approaching? It's in the winter. The winter when the nights are longest and the days are shortest. Right? It, just, it just stays dark so long. And it's at that moment when it looks like we're done. Just the Jews have run out of fuel. 
Oh yeah, we. There was one pach. There was one pach shemen. There was one vessel of oil that somehow managed to survive Antiochus Epiphanes the fourth. That was pure. Should have only lasted for a day. And it would run out. We wouldn't have been able to produce pure oil within a day. But Hashem did a miracle, and that is the light kept going. Do you ever feel alone sometimes? Do you ever wonder if God's really listening to you, if he's really out there? Do you feel like it's dark too much, it's cold too much, the loneliness is bitter? And Lord, I'm not sure if you're out there. I know you listened to my ancestors when they cried out to you. This is what Psalm 22 is about. This is what King David was weeping about. I don't know. I don't, are you there? At the coldest, darkest time of the year, Hashem says, here I am. Here's the light. So he sends out that signal of light in the darkest time. What chance did the Jews have? What he's saying is, I love you. I'm here. Now, why do we light the menorah? Well, this is where we're going. Why do we light? What we're really saying, why do we light the menorah in a public place? It means we do it at a window, Right? is what we're saying is God is saying from heaven, I love you, I see you, I know sometimes it doesn't appear that way, but I got you. And when we light the menorah, we are saying to God, I love you too. That's what it is. It's God sending us the signal of light, and we are responding saying, I see the light, and I recognize it's a miraculous light. I can't explain to you why God didn't tell us to do what the witnesses do. Logically, they're right. We should be just knocking on doors. But we have a Torah. And we have prophets that we will bless with that inspired us. The Jewish people have a role. And that's what goes to the Noahide element. And that is to be a light for all the nations of the world. We're, after all, we are a guy, we are a nation, we're called that way, but we're, we're a unique nation. We, we, now, if we behave like Bernie Madoff, if we behave like, I don't know, Karl Marx, well, they, they failed, right? They failed at that task. But what is God doing in the book of Genesis? He's trying to find, he's trying to identify a family he can work with who would do what? Who would be that light, who would be that nation that would carry on the message to the rest of the world. That's really where Genesis is. It's a weeding out. I need to find the nation, which is the family. Okay, I've got a man. i got a man who came out of nowhere. His daddy, Terach, an idol worshiper. Sold idols. Joshua chapter 24. And Abraham discovered God and discovered that he's one and he's one alone. Out of nowhere, out of nowhere, he's really mugging Avram. He's that shield. I mean, how did he do that? In the ancient world, monotheism? Like, how did you figure that out? They didn't, we now know, we now know it's all hydrogen and carbon. We know it's all the same stuff, right? They didn't. And he understood that the point of monotheism, the whole, why is it so important that there's one God? Why does it matter that much? Because if there's one God that we know about his nature, he's love. God has to be love if he's all-powerful because he doesn't need what anything you have to offer him. There's nothing he lacks that you can provide, which means that God created this whole world out of an act of, of chesed, of complete kindness, of, of love. And that's why Abraham stood for love. That's why Abraham stood for kindness, because he sought to emulate God after all he's created the image of God. That's what it's all about. That's what the monotheism is about. It's not like uh, it's not a, a numerate thing. It's not a numbers issue. 
It's not a math issue. It's about who is the God that I worship. Okay. So Genesis is, is a book that essentially is devoted for a search, a search for a family, a man like Abraham, who were introduced at the end of Pashas Noach, Genesis 11, who did not seek honor for himself like the people who, who, who sought to build the Tower of Babel, but rather he sought to perpetuate the memory of his own brother who died. Ah, I'm going to work with you. You're the kind of man. But the weeding process continues. Asaph is gone. You see? And in, how does Genesis end? The book of Genesis ends with Jacob on his deathbed. And he assembles the, his descendants and, and tells them about their destiny and offers the blessing. And that's it. So the, the Genesis is a book in hot pursuit of a nation that God could work with to hold the flame for the nations of the world. And that's our role, and that's the message built into Isaiah chapter 42, verse 6, Isaiah 49, verse 5 and 6. It's really built into everything. That's the role of the Jew. And, in fact, in the Messianic age, the non-Jews will get it. As we approach the Messianic age, people go, wait, with the Jews. And they're going to grab our shirts and say, teach us about God we we know now that God's with you. We, we can't understand your suffering. That's what Isaiah 53 really is about. It's, about it's, a, it's a soliloquy of the non-Jews who say, holy smokes, the Jews, God was with them alone. Why did they suffer? That, that's what's so brilliant, so breathtaking about Tanakh. It's all just a delicious harmony that moves together in, in a way that could only produce an ecstatic, numinous feeling among those who are paying attention to the light. Happy Hanukkah.